QuickBooks Online 2023 Credit Card Bank Feed Ad Data. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it the incognito or another browser to open the sample company you can open the incognito if using google chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window type in into the search engine quickbooks online test drive we're using the sample company to compare the accounting view the one the bank feeds practice file is in and the business view the one the sample company is in you can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below opening up some tabs duplicating them in other words to put reports in by right click on the tab up top and duplicate perfect duplicate right click the tab up top again and then duplicate back to the tab to the middle to open up the report which report is it oh i don't know let's switch things up this time a bit and open up the balance sheet uh if you're in the if you're in the business view by the way the reports are in the business overview reports on the left hand side that's where they are that's the location of them let's go to the tab to the right and then back to the reports on the left this time the p and the l the profit and the loss the income statement i'm closing the hamburger i'm changing the range 010122 tab 123122 tab running it to refreshing it tabbing to the middle closing the hamburger scrolling up and the range it needs to change man things need to change around here 123122 that's i've had enough run run it to refresh running 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 run oh shit okay no need to get angry we're gonna go tap to the left and now open up the banking because that's what we're working on so that's in the, the banking area there's our bank feed stuff if you're in the business view by the way the banking is located in the bookkeeping on the left hand side and then the transactions up top and then the bank transactions uh, is where they're located over there in the business view. All right. So last time we set up our checking account and then we're like, that made things way easier. Can I do that with my credit card accounts too? And the answer, of course, yes, you can. We could do it with the credit card. So now I've got the drop down. I got the two tags up top representing the credit card, the credit card being very similar to the checking accounts in that. Uh, every time we, we link something, it'll basically be linked to like an expense, for example. But instead of the checking account going down, we're going to have a liability account, the credit account going up. We're not going to have basically the, uh, the deposit side of the checking account. So remember when you're looking at the checking account, you're thinking of the two kind of components, the vendor cycle or expenses cycle and the customer or deposit cycle. At the end of the vendor cycle, we typically expect the cash to be going down in some way, shape or form. Most small businesses oftentimes will do electronic transfers so that they can basically use the bank feeds to create their expenses cycle, paying their telephone utilities and so on automatically. And that's great. The larger the business gets, it's more likely that they might use like an accrual system entering bills, which means you have an accounts payable and that makes it a little bit more complicated to construct with the bank feeds. But then on the customer or revenue side of things, when you're looking at the checking account, many businesses often have to deviate from just constructing their books from deposits that come through the bank feeds because they have like a cash register situation they have to deal with or they have to send out invoices, which kind of complex puts more complexity into the situation which we talked about in prior presentations with the credit cards you're not really talking about the revenue cycle 
We're really only talking about kind of a way that you can deal with the vendor or expenses cycle. And the credit cards themselves are, of course, a form of electronic transfer going through the financial statements. And therefore, it's likely that many small businesses will, if they're using the credit card, to credit card debt, credit card debt, to pay off their bills, are just going to be paying off those bills using the bank feeds. In other words, we're not going to enter the transaction into the credit card as we make the credit card payment in our books to match it to the bank feeds once they clear the bank feeds, which is a full service kind of system. But instead, we're just going to say we're going to pay it with the credit card. We're not going to record it. Wait till it clears the bank, which will happen or the credit card company in one to three days, typically quite quickly, and then record it in our system with the use of the credit card. So the expense will be impacted in the same way as if we paid it with an electronic transfer on the bank feeds. But instead of decreasing the checking account, we're going to be increasing a credit card account. So we'll look at some examples for that. The only other kind of tricky thing with a credit card is that the the then you've got payments to pay down the credit card, hopefully monthly, so that we don't have to deal with the interest on the credit card. So if you pay off everything with a credit card, if you pay for all your expenses with a credit card, you collect the points and all the stuff that the credit card gives you and you avoid the interest and penalty charges by paying the credit card each month, that could be a good system oftentimes and it might raise your credit score. It might allow you to get points from the credit card company and so on and so forth. And it'll still allow you to minimize or avoid you know, interest. So that could be a good system to do. But then you've got this interbank fee transaction coming from the bank to the credit card. We'll talk about those in a future presentation. So those are easy to deal with, but they're a little bit tricky. You can see they're trying to pair it automatically uh, with QuickBooks here. So we'll talk more about that in a future presentation. All right, so let's just categorize these. We're in bank feed limbo, just like we would be if these were coming in from the bank feeds. We don't have enough information for QuickBooks to pull it in from here, bank feed limbo to the promised land, creating the financial statements. Uh, with this data, what does it need? It needs an account at least to assign it to. We can, of course, start to memorize those accounts. We can create rules in the same way we did with a check checking account to make it more automated going forward. But we got to give it that little push, that little bit of help, that little bit of love in order for it to be able to do that. OK, so let's do it then. We'll go in. We also have to add a vendor, by the way. You want to add the vendors as we go. OK, let's do this one. So we'll just add a few of these as we go. We're we'll just going to say, all right, this one is the pharmacy so i'm going to say okay let's just say it's going to be cvs pharmacy and i'm just going to type that in here as the vendor just like we've did on the cash side of things on the checking account save it it's trying to pick draws that's that might be actually somewhat accurate because if i'm paying for pharmacy pills then maybe i'm paying that with my business credit card and it's like a personal transaction so you have the same kind of issue that you do with the checking account in that case. Normally, you don't want to do that. You'd like to have two credit cards, one for personal, one for business. But uh, if you do mix them up and you say, OK, what if that's a personal charge? It shouldn't be on the business side of things. Then let's practice that and say, I'm going to put it to draws instead of an expense account. So the, the thing you should do is pay for it with another credit card. Uh, but if you can't, you could can say, OK, I'm just going to make it go to draws and that way it won't hit the income statement. So that's another format that you can do. And then, of course, you could create a rule for it. Let's create a rule and I'm going to say it's going to be a money out rule. I'm going to say it has the text. I like using the text to be more specific and it has CVS. I'll draw it from the memo CVS slash pharmacy in it. Boom. If it has that, then apply the rule. It's going to be an expense uh, type of transaction. That's the form that it's going to be used, not an expense type of account. Category is going to be draws. It's actually an equity type of account that's going to be hit. And then this is the payee. And I'm not going to add it automatically. Maybe I'll do that later, but I'd like to turn it off at the start so I can double check that my rules are being applied in the format. I think they should be before I pull them over to the promised land of the financial statements. So no, something's not quite right. I don't think it likes this dash maybe. And so let's save it again. OK, so there you have it. So the rule has been created. I have created another rule, which is over here in the rules area. 
this being a credit card uh, rule. So that looks good. If I go to my financial statements and I run the balance sheet, running it and scrolling down, instead of the checking account going down, we have instead a liability, the bad thing going up. Now this has a beginning balance in it. I'm actually gonna delete that beginning balance just so you can see uh, what is happening as we go here. So I'm gonna go in here and say, I'm gonna go into that beginning balance and I'm going to remove it just so just so we can start at at zero so you can see what happens when I put the expenses in here instead of having that balance in it at the start. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this. I'm going to say more delete and then we'll deal with that beginning balance issue like we talked about in the prior presentation when I do the first kind of credit card reconciliation. Now I didn't actually record it. I just created the rule and then apply it. So I'm gonna go back on over and I'm gonna apply it. So there's the rule. rules, rules, rules. <laughs> rule has been applied. So now I'm gonna add it. And now let's go back on over to the balance sheet, refresh it again, and just see that one transaction in the credit card account. There it is. There's the transaction. It's increasing the liability account. So it's a positive, like bad thing. Notice it increased it with a expense form which might look unusual because you're like expense forms usually deal with a decrease to the checking account, but that's the form that QuickBooks is using and it's just assigning it instead of a checking account to the credit card. So you can think of the expense form as one that can be used for the credit card or the uh, checking account. It's like a check without the check number usually for a checking account form, but you can also use it as basically a credit card uh, payment increase in the liability by just assigning it to the credit card account and then draws down below. So note the other side did not go to the income statement because we said we bought something for the personal side, therefore it went into draws, a contra equity account. So there it is on the draws, scrolling back up. That looks good. Now notice that if it was a personal thing and you, and you put it as an expense, then your income statement over here would have overstated your expenses, understating net income, which is actually good for taxes because then you would have less taxable income likely and pays less taxes. But of course it would be incorrect. And if you have a large dollar amount in like pharmaceuticals and you're, and you do, you know, accounting, <laughs> then, then the IRS might say, well, why is that? Or if you have a big amount in miscellaneous also note that, uh, if you have someone else doing your bookkeeping, or if you're doing bookkeeping for someone else, it can be very difficult sometimes to determine whether something is personal versus business. Because, But if you're doing your own books, it might be a little bit easier to do that. Also note, you might want to use QuickBooks for your own personal accounting, which works great. You would, it'd be best to have two files and still have two credit card accounts and have two uh, checking accounts, personal versus business. But if you have a very, if you have a small business and you just have a Schedule C business, it's possible to run one QuickBooks file and use the class tracking, turn on class tracking, which means you'd have to assign a class to every transaction. And then you could run a profit and loss report business and personal. So remember the, the way you could turn on class tracking. If you want to practice that, we have whole courses on class tracking as you hit the cog up top, you can go to the account settings and it's in the advanced over here. And then you've got your class tracking. Uh, then you've got your class tracking. It was right there. Hold on a second. Then you've got where, where, where I just, I just saw it. I swear there it is. It's under the category section. So you can turn on your class tracking. If you do that, you're going to have to assign a class to every transaction. So it's a little bit tedious, but you might be able to memorize that transaction and, and you can always go back in there, fix transactions. If some of them were, were not classified. So it's something that you might want. It might be interested in checking out. So there's that. All right, let's go back then, uh, to where my profit and loss got messed up. So this is going from 010122 to 123122 run it. And let's go back and do another one. So then let's say that these are all for supplies for Costco supplies. I buy my Costco supplies. So I'm going to say this is going to be Costco. I'll just say Costco. I don't want the WWW that doesn't, I don't like that. I'm just going to say Costco, save it. And then we're going to say, this is going to be a, a vendor draws. Okay. So then the category 
I'm going to make the category be supplies. I don't think I have a supplies yet. So I'm going to create an expense account as we go on the fly as we're flying. And so we're going to say it's hard to make stuff when you're flying, but I'm going to do it right here because we're flying and I'm going to, I don't really care about this other account. I'm going to put it over here. I'm just going to call it supplies expense. Boom. Save it. Now, Costco is one of those areas where you might buy like supplies most of the time, but then you might buy equipment sometime. So you might want to set up some rules that are a li little bit more restrictive. I won't get too detailed into this now, but just to give you an idea, if I create my rules over here, we might say, okay, this is Costco rule. You might try to differentiate the rule for a dollar amount under say $5,000 or something versus a dollar amount over 5,000 because if it's over 5,000 or 1,000 or whatever number you think is appropriate, it's likely that it's gonna be equipment as opposed to uh, a supplies expense. So it's gonna be a, a money out rule for the visa. And you might say that I want all of them to apply. Let's go from the text. So in the text, I'm gonna do the normal kind of thing where it should say Costco in it somewhere. Do I, I don't, I'm not sure I want the www dot, but Costco. And then if you have that number rule, you might also say, hey, look, if it has an amount that is less than like a thousand or two thousand or whatever you think is appropriate, then I want you to apply the rule. If it's over two thousand, I don't want you to apply the rule because I want to double check it and see that if I need to include it as equipment as opposed to supplies. Because if you buy like a, a fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment for cash or something, and you just expense it as supplies, it's gonna start again looking bad on your tax return because the IRS is gonna say, you should have put it on the books as an asset and depreciated it, you over expensed it and you might, and so it could be a red flag in that case. So you might put a dollar, we'll talk more about those rules though later. So I'm gonna close, I'm gonna X that out. It's gonna be from an expense form. I'm gonna say, okay, everything looks mooey B to the N, B to the N baby, let's go up top. And then I'm going to sort the rules and say, I want to see the ones that are recognized. I recognize. So there they are. So I look, they look good. So I'm just going to select all of them. I'm holding down shift and I'll select the top and bottom. Boom. Boom. And then accept. They have been accepted. Let's go on over to the balance sheet and K Paso. What in what happened? What happened? Let's go down and check it out. I'll show you what happened in the credit card. If I go into the credit card now, we've got these increases from, of course, the Costco's that have gone in there. They're all with expense forms. So QuickBooks is using an expense form instead of like creating, you know, another form that they're going to use specific to the credit card because it's like the same thing. We're just assigning it to the credit card, another financial kind of account, although instead of an asset, a liability account back the other side's going to the income statement as would be expected into the to the supplies expense that we created down here boom shaka laka just like just like the bank feeds except for instead of cash going down the credit card is going up do i have any others that we need to deal with here let's go back to the first tab and check it out i'm going to remove the rule and so let's do this board of accountancy so i'll say okay let's do that one just say this is like, I'm going to say board of accountancy, board of accountancy. And then we'll say like, this is going to be license or something, dues and subscriptions or something like that, let's say. So I'm going to say it's going to be an expense. It's going to be dues and subscriptions. Boom. Let's do that and save it. And I can create a rule for that if I wanted to. Let's do it because why in the world wouldn't we? Huh? Huh? Tell me that. Let's see, dude. Okay. So then rule has been applied. Boom. And then let's add it. Bam. Check it. Balance sheet. Running it. Running. Scrolling down on the, the credit card credit card let's see the credit that has been happening and so there's that one there it is the other side going to dues and subscription we made the account on the fly we were flying and we made it in the air 
in the air. We made it on the fly. Made it on top of the fly's wings. Made the thing while well, I was on flies on a, on a fly. And I swatted the fly. What are you talking about? Just do the, where to do some, there it is. All right, so there, let's go back on up. So that looks good. So now we've got this one, we've got this, this issue with the credit card, which might not tie out at this point in time to what's on my credit card statement due to that beginning balance issue that we're gonna have to deal with. So we've got that issue. And then we've got the payments that are gonna happen later that are coming, that are gonna be inter bank feed accounts, payments coming out of the checking account and going to the credit card account. And they're kind of trying to match those up. We'll talk about those in a little bit more detail in uh, future presentations.